the box model. We know that all the elements have a rectangular box around them. Each box also has a width and height, but it can also have padding, borders, and margins as well. Let's take a look at all of these parts called the box model. We've covered a bit already with the width and height of elements. Every element has a default width. Remember, block level elements have a default width of 100%, and inline and inline block elements will expand and contract to accommodate their content. The default height of an element is determined by its content. It will expand and contract vertically as necessary to accommodate its content. Let's, let's look closely at padding, border, and margin. The padding and margin properties are very helpful in adding space between various items on the page. This is often referred to as white space or space without images or text. Padding allows us to set an amount of space inside the element's border. For example, our P element that we have here might look something like this with very little padding with the text right up to at the edge. It's expanding just wide enough to include the content. We've given the P element a background color that lies within the border of the element. Padding will allow us to give that paragraph's text some breathing room or white space. But this white space is still inside the border of the paragraph element with padding. The content is still the same width, but 40 pixels of padding have been added around the inside of its border. Every box has a border, even if it's not showing, as is our paragraph. Or in other words, it has a default width of zero pixels. The border separates the padding and the margin. If we want a visible border, we're going to need three values, width, style, and color. For example, it would look like this, border, five pixels, solid, black. You can give it any color or width, and there are different styles like double, dashed, and dotted. We can even round the corners with border radius, such as border radius five pixels. You could even make a circle with border radius of 50% if your image was a square. If we apply that to our image, our image was a little wider than it was tall, so it makes an oval. If we want space around our elements or beyond the border, we can give them margining. The margin allows us to set the amount of space surrounding an element. It's the gap between the borders of two adjacent boxes. Margin spacing will fall outside of the border. It helps to keep elements a certain distance from each other. And notice how there's now 30 pixels between the top and bottom of the image in paragraph. The browser default CSS might give a little margining or padding for certain elements, but we can always change that through CSS. Sometimes there's no background color and no visible border. So padding and margins seem to do the same thing, but it's important to understand how the box model works with every element. It's also helpful to know the longhand and shorthand way to give values to our padding and margins. If one value is given, the value is applied to all four sides of the element. If we give two values, the first value is for the top and bottom, and the second value is for the right and left. We saw that with margin zero auto earlier. To set unique values for all four sides, you can specify four values and they will apply in order from top, right, bottom, then left clockwise. We could also just apply padding or margin to just one side by adding a dash top, dash bottom, dash right, or dash left to either margin or padding. It's important to understand just how much room elements really take on our page. By default, when we say the width of an element is 500 pixels, for example, that doesn't include the padding and border. If we had 20 pixels of padding and a border of 10 pixels on every side, the actual full width of the element is 560 pixels. The 500 for the width plus 20 padding and 10 border on both sides. The box model can be changed, however, to calculate the padding and border into the overall width with the box sizing property. For example, box si sizing border box. 
This is different from the default a content box where the border and padding are not included. So if I wanted to have my paragraph with its padding and boarding border to be the same width as the image, I can use box size border box to do that.